Welcome to County Report This Week. I'm Mona Virgili. Thank you for joining us. Coming up in the next half hour, Sun Montgomery College students were awarded for excelling in the classroom. The Montgomery County Department of Recreation wants everyone to be safe when they open the pools for the summer. And Rockville is getting ready for their hometown holidays. But we begin with Governor Larry Hogan signing NOAA's law this week. The new law reduces the level of alcohol to 0.08% to have ignition interlocks installed in the vehicles of those driving under the influence of alcohol. Today we're going to be uh, signing another 144 <laughs> bills into law, uh, including important legislation aimed at protecting Maryland's citizens, honoring our fallen heroes, and modernizing Maryland's criminal justice system. I want to begin by recognizing Mr. and Mrs. Richard Leota, who are here in the front row. As everybody knows, their son, uh, Montgomery County Police Officer Noah Leota, was killed in the line of duty as a result of a drunk driver and thanks in large part uh, to his family's tireless efforts, today we are signing Noah's Law, which will require interlock, uh, ignition interlock devices for anyone convicted of drunk driving in Maryland. The law lowers the blood alcohol level at which ignition locks are required from 0.15 to 0.08. It also requires ignition interlocks for anyone who has failed a breath alcohol test not just those who have been convicted of driving under the influence. This, um, th this signing today is really uh, a celebration of uh, Officer Noah Liotta, I mean, and the legacy that he left as, as just a, a great police officer. You know, it's, it's, it's a, actually a bittersweet day for the family and for the police department, but the fact is that um, even though Noah is no longer going to be on patrol as a police officer, he'll be saving lives um, for many years to come because of Noah's law. And the law goes into effect on October 1st. The Montgomery County Council approved new zoning for the West Park community in Bethesda. The vote was unanimous for the West Park sector plan. My MC Media's Sonia Burke reports. All in favor? Um, Please raise your hands. It's unanimous. The Montgomery County Council has unanimously approved new zoning for the West Bard community of Bethesda. Well, this was a difficult process, emotionally and every other way. People were really so angry about this plan. Some residents who opposed the plan were in the audience for the council's vote. I think everybody in the community is very disappointed. We all know that River Road is a disaster during rush hour as it is now and with this vote it's going to get a lot worse. We did our best to adjust, to look at what was necessary to get some redevelopment in the shopping area and at the same time protect the edges and the community relationships and I think that's what we've done with this plan. The approved West Bard plan significantly scales back development when compared to the original plan sent over by the planning board. I felt like I provided our council with a alternative approach that reduced the scope of this plan by 50 percent and I really feel like that found the the right balance between growing our community appropriately and providing all the goals and achieving all the goals that this plan allowed for us to achieve, which is a better shopping center, greener environment, a more diverse community, and just a better community overall. I want to thank the community for their hard work. Nobody gets everything, and you know, you're not getting everything, which I think you're getting a far, far better plan than what this started out to be. I'm sure there are folks who say it wasn't good enough, but this is the way of all master plans. I think, uh, I think at the end of the day, it's a good 30-year vision for the West Bard area. In Rockville, I'm Sonia Burr for County Report This Week. County leaders have been aspiring for years to spur economic development in the Up County. Well, that is set to become a reality in a matter of months. Susan Kennedy reports. If you've spent any time on 270 near Clarksburg recently, you've probably noticed this. Construction of a massive outlet center just off Highway 121. 
Cabin Branch outlets will consist of 90 stores, 484,000 square feet of retail to be exact. The project broke ground just last October and it's scheduled to be open for business October 26th of this year. And things are going great. We had a great winter to build the center, the mild weather. Steel's going up, walls are going up, utilities are going in, and we are preparing for our first tenant turnover so the tenants can start building out their spaces in July, all to prepare for uh, October opening. So things are going very well out here. A lot of activity, a lot of activity. The outlets will bring much needed retail to the Clarksburg community. Cabin Branch will have two stories of pedestrian friendly shopping. Simon Development and the Black Rock Center for the Arts are exploring a partnership to provide an outdoor amphitheater. It's a great demographic. We wanted to bring something exciting and different to the community. This is going to be the first two-level outdoor outlet center that we've built in the United States. It's going to be just a great experience for the family to come out on the weekends and shop and enjoy the day. And some adjustments are being made to Route 121 as it relates to I-270 to accommodate the traffic. Understanding that this is a regional draw, that this is going to bring folks from all over, means that we're really going to have to pay very close attention to those traffic patterns and continue to make adjustments as we see fit. The project has created more than 500 construction jobs, and when the center opens, there will be hundreds more that need to be filled. Dworkin says ventures like Cabin Branch create what is known in business as the halo effect, meaning the outlets could generate a real buzz around Clarksburg. I've actually been personally uh, bombarded with folks who are talking about that they want to now locate their business in Clarksburg. We've seen uh, other commercial uh, developments that are now looking at Clarksburg as a result because they heard uh, that this outlet mall was coming here. It really is going to make Clarksburg a destination place, which will then have an ancillary effect in terms of boosting all the business revenue for all the other businesses in Clarksburg, as well as other folks that want to locate in Clarksburg as well. In Clarksburg, I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report this week. The Montgomery County Green Business Certification Program helps businesses and nonprofit organizations go above and beyond in their commitment to the environment. The Montgomery County Green Business Certification Program is an umbrella program. Uh, we have our, our, our homegrown program that we created a number of years ago with focusing on offices and then we created a separate one for landscapers and then we decided to recognize uh, businesses that are certified by reputable third party programs around the country and one of them is uh, B Corp uh, and that's perhaps the, the highest bar of them all so we're delighted to, to bring into the program a certified B Corp. Recently, an event was held to convene certified B Corps, benefit corporations, and socially and environmentally responsible businesses from Maryland, D.C., and Northern Virginia. B Corps are for profit companies certified by the nonprofit B Lab to meet rigorous standards of social and environmental performance. With the help of B Lab, um, we drafted legislation to say that corporations should be able to build into their DNA, into their incorporating documents, a commitment to a social function, uh, a social purpose, um, a material positive impact on society in addition to the money-making purpose. And that would be um, something that the corporation would hold itself responsible for. Um, by being accountable to the shareholders for that. And there would be regular reports through a third party um, approving entity like, like B-Lab. And we passed it in 2010. And then in the intervening years, we've seen now a majority of the states in the last six years uh, do it. So, I mean, this is an extremely rapid growth social movement uh, that you guys are part of here. And it's also urgently necessary. This is really about businesses uh, operating as a force for good and driving all the change that every single person in the room here seeks to achieve. There's no doubt about it, folks. The private sector is the most powerful entity in the world. Um, and yet it's never been addressed in a context of trying to move that entire community in this direction. The B Corp movement is a principal way of doing that benefit corporations and B Corps together can make that change. If you would like more information about becoming a certified B Corporation, visit bcorporation.net. 
You can also find more information at mcgreenbiz.com. I would encourage anybody to pursue a B-Lab certification. Certainly our department, the Department of Environmental Protection, is very receptive. And I think you'll find uh, the executive branch generally, as well as the county council, would be interested in, in moving in this, in this direction. I mean, a community dotted with a certified B Corps is a better community. This week, the county's transportation director was the guest at the Spanish language radio show. He gave an update on the executive's proposal for bus rapid transit, BRT, on Route 29. According to Director Al Rushdi, that corridor will be up and running in the next four years. And then south of New Hampshire is going to be partly in mixed traffic with all the other cars and portion will be in a managed lane. Managed lane could be a HOV lane, mm -hmm. it could be a business access lane. So, uh, so altogether, the, this uh, bus rapid transit is going to be uh, about 50% in dedicated lane and the rest of it uh, mm -hmm. about 30% in mixed traffic. He also talked about the Summer Youth Cruiser Pass that provides unlimited rides on ride-on for kids all summer. The pass's cost is only $18 and it can be obtained at any library, in some schools, and at any trips store. Coming up on County Report this week, some residents are not happy with a plan to relocate school buses. And it's almost time for Montgomery County schools to open. We'll tell you how to swim safe this summer. Stay tuned. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County government's online telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. Welcome back to County Report this week. I'm Lorna Virgili. Hundreds of residents turn out for a Montgomery County Public Schools meeting held to discuss the relocation of 100 school buses to Rockville. Miami Media's Maureen Chaudhary reports. Hundreds of residents packed the room at an MCPS meeting in Rockville to voice their opposition for plans to relocate 100 school buses from the Shady Grove Bus Depot to the Carver Educational Services parking lot and they wanted answers. Do we have an interim solution? Do we have a complete interim solution, a plan for all of the buses at Shady Grove? And then I have a follow-up. No, there is no complete interim solution. Three Montgomery County Council members and several state officials also turned out and said they opposed the plan too. It is my understanding that there has to be a no further need statement by the Montgomery County Council before anything can be sold. At this point, there is, there's nine people in the County Council, three of us were here this evening, saying that, that, that we would not allow the, the buses on, um, on Crabs Branch to be moved until there could be a permanent solution. The lot has to be vacated by, by January 2017. The decision on whether or not we move ahead with the Carver Bus Depot, I think is with the Board of Education because ultimately next Jul in July, it will be coming back to us for the approval of the construction contract. So that will be an opportunity for the board to say yes or no uh, for the Carver site. And for residents, the conversation isn't over. We heard much more clearly that uh, the County Council and Board of Ed are beginning to hear thus that this is the wrong plan, the wrong place, just a bad idea. And we're going to have to keep pressing until this bad idea goes away. In Rockville, I'm Maureen Chaudhary for County Report This Week. No bus 
Montgomery College honored the legacy of a fallen comrade and celebrated the academic success of its high achieving students. Carolina Galliano covered the event. Welcome to the 2016 Dr. Harry Hardin Jr. Student Academic Excellence Awards. Montgomery College's administration, faculty, and staff joined in celebrating students who excelled in the classroom, achieving a 3.5 or higher grade point average over the past two semesters. Of the nearly 400 students meeting this rigorous criteria, 125 of you have achieved a perfect 4.0 GPA both semesters. The ceremony honors Dr. Harry Hardin Jr., a former Montgomery College Dean of Student Development who created the Academic Awards Program. Dr. Harry Hardin himself had a true passion for bringing together of all students of various backgrounds, ethnicities, and experiences. I know that Dr. Hardin's vision is being carried out each and every day at Montgomery College. The event included a keynote speech by radio personality Elizabethany who gave advice on being successful both socially and professionally. Support people with what they want to do. Help them out. They can help you out later. That's how these professional but also friendship relationships work. Antoine Battle, a recent MC alum, also gave words of encouragement. Continue reading. Become a lifelong learner. Keep up everything uh, that you've learned and you've practiced at Montgomery College because you all are the future. The highlight of the event was the presentation of the Academic Excellence Awards, including three excellence student medallions. It makes me proud. I feel like I did something. So this is kind of credit to myself and my family and for everybody who was a part of this January. These kids, they're empowered to go do something positive. It makes me feel good that my brother was a part of this and his name is going to live on forever. Reporting from the Montgomery College Rockville campus, I'm Carolina Galliano. The Maryland Department of Health and Mental Hygiene and the Montgomery County Department of Health and Human Services are hosting a town hall meeting on Thursday, May 26. Learn about Maryland's plan for fighting the Zika virus. Come to the Dennis Avenue Health Center from 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. for a presentation and get your questions answered. For more information, you can go online to montgomerycountymd.gov slash mosquito or call 311. Memorial Day weekend is the traditional start of the summer swim season. Seven outdoor pools will open at noon on Saturday, May 28th. The Montgomery County Recreation Department wants to encourage residents to beat the summer heat by coming out to the county's pools. But keep in mind the rules for pool safety. Pool safety is a critical issue for everybody and it is a top priority here in Montgomery County Aquatics. Everybody has a role to play from swim instruction to our lifeguards to parents ensuring that kids are playing safely and that they're being supervised. Everybody has an important role to play in pool safety and we're proud to have such a strong record of safety here in Montgomery County. Swim lessons are offered at all county indoor and outdoor pools throughout the year. Each session has one or two sets of lessons. You can get that information at any of the aquatic centers, the main recreation department offices, or any of the county libraries. In addition to swim lessons, the county offers water safety programs, lifeguarding, water safety instructor courses. We also offer water exercise programs as well as diving and swim team programs year round. Through your reach, right? Hit that reach strong looking forward. The lifeguards provide supervision and make sure that all our patrons are displaying safe behavior at the pool. Parents and caregivers need to keep an eye on their kids. Um, sometimes you think that, you know, they'll be okay, they won't go in a part that's too deep for them. So you really just want to make sure you're with your kids, with an eye on them at all times. We provide safety life, uh, life jackets that you're allowed to borrow from the pool. So yeah, just make sure you're with your kids. 
We hope that families take advantage of the wonderful aquatics amenities that we have across the entire county and take advantage of the great programs and services that we have to offer and come out and have a good time. But bear in mind that safety is our number one priority and will be this summer too. You can find out more information about the county's pools on the Recreation website. Coming up on County Report this week, students from Honduras get some information about what local government does. And we have a report on how the Montgomery College track and field team did this season. Don't go away, County Report this week is coming right back. In Montgomery County, we have a goal to reduce waste and recycle 70% of all waste by 2020. By recycling and reducing waste, we save natural resources and make our community even better. So recycle at home, work, school, everywhere, and keep recycling going. For more information, call the Montgomery County, Maryland Division of Solid Waste Services at 311 or visit montgomerycountymd.gov slash recycling. Keep it going. Recycle more now. Welcome back to County Report this week. I'm Lorna Virgili. Montgomery County Council members Sydney Katz, George Leventhal, and Nancy Navarro met with several students who were visiting the metropolitan area as part of the Access Micro Scholarship English Language Program sponsored by the U.S. Embassy in Honduras. A group of Honduran students came to the D.C. area to experience U.S. civics and volunteerism. They visited with a few council members to learn how they serve the community. Uh, well, good morning and thank you for being here. Um, Montgomery County is larger than about six states population-wise in, in America. My name is Nancy Navarro and um, I'm originally from Caracas, Venezuela. Yo llegué listo a dar un discurso en español. Yo también! <laughs> the Honduran students asked several great questions to the council members. What's the importance of being a volunteer for you? There's a huge culture of volunteerism here in this area that's really wonderful. There's so many opportunities. And I always tell young people when you're starting out, um, you know, always find a little bit of time to volunteer. I mean, it's a great way to also expose yourself, to network, to meet, but best of all, just to give back in some ways. Some of them wanted to know exactly what is it that you do. We have to deal with every aspect of the government when it comes to laws, budget, land use, um, that's, that's what we do. Each of us have staff that, that works on constituent service. Someone calls up and complains about something, someone on their staff figures out what to do with the something and, and get back with somebody. I, I understand the question is what do we do, but what I'd like to say to all of you is about what do you do. Um, and clearly Central America is facing an enormous crisis. Clearly there is a great need for sus cerebros. I help the people with disability. We recollect money to give them their treatment to the cancer. I, I also work in, in, my, in my church. If we are uh, good guys at school, maybe friends that are not good, we can change their minds. Students and council members had a very productive dialogue that will be useful for both groups to better serve their communities. Cheers. The Montgomery College track and field team just finished up their season at the NJCAA D3 National Championships and MCTV's Michael Brown has a report on how they did. The MC track and field team qualified over 30 athletes for nationals and they delivered some outstanding performances. 
On day one, Mike Scott won a silver medal when he placed second in the long jump with a leap of 6.75 meters. And in women's long jump, Brianna Rhodes also grabbed a silver, just missing gold by a fraction of a meter. MC spent day two of the championships making trip after trip to the podium to receive their medals. Brianna Rhodes got things started when she took home the national championship in high jump for the second straight year. She dominated the field with a leap of 1.61 meters. And then the men's 4x800 meter relay team of Sam Posnuski, Lorenzo Andaya, Ernest Long, and Delic Mutabazi pulled off a big upset when they took the national title with a blistering time of 8.16.86. MC also grabbed a number of top five finishes on day two. Devontae Johnson had the best throw of his life and came within a fraction of a meter of winning the shot put, settling for silver. The men's four by 100 meter relay team was nipped at the tape in a photo finish as they claimed a silver medal. Freshman Donovan Tyler surprised all the experts when he picked up a silver by finishing second in a very strong men's discus field. Chenille Thomas had two top five finishes, grabbing third in the 100 meter hurdles and a fourth in the 400 meter hurdles. Brett Evans and Lud Blair finished third and fourth respectively in the men's 200 and in the men's 400 meter hurdles, Sam Posnuski came in fifth. And more honors came MC's way when Brianna Rhodes was named the Female Field Athlete of the Year for the NJCAA Eastern Region. When all was said and done, the MC men finished fifth in the country overall and the women finished seventh. For County Report this week for Montgomery College, I'm Michael Brown. Coming up on County Report this week, we will tell you about the biggest Memorial Day party this side of the Chesapeake and you'll meet our pet of the week. Stay with us, we'll return after this. Sixty minutes of physical activity a day and eating well can help get your child healthy. So keep them active and eating well every day. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. That's letsmove.gov. Welcome back to County Report this week. I'm Lorna Vigeli. Have you made plans for Memorial Day weekend yet? Well, don't forget to check out the City of Rockville's annual Hometown Holidays event. It's a Rockville tradition you don't want to miss. Rock 11 Now's Kathy Dansler tells us what you can expect this year. Rockville Hometown Holidays Music Fest is your destination this Memorial Day weekend. It's six blocks in Rockville Town Center featuring four stages of live performances from more than 30 local, regional, and national artists. Plus, we'll be showcasing some of the best local food around with the taste of Rockville. And of course, there are plenty of activities for the kids. You can also take time to meet some community groups that are doing great things for Rockville. And the festivities wrap up on Monday with the Memorial Day Parade, featuring more than 60 parade units from around the region. So why not make it a family affair and join us for this year's hometown holidays, Memorial Day weekend, May 28th through the 30th in Rockville Town Center. And for your A to Z guide for everything hometown holidays, just head to rockvillemd.gov slash HTH. Hope to see you there. For County Report This Week, I'm Kathy Dantzler. And now it's time to meet our pet of the week. Kathy Stanhope joins us from the Montgomery County Animal Services and Adoption Center with more. Kathy? This week's pet of the week is a very handsome guy named Spot. He is half Australian Shepherd and half Ana Anatolian Shepherd, just about five years old, and he is an extremely well-behaved dog, I'm finding. When I say sit, he sits. When I say down, he goes down. Very nice guy. I'm told he's high energy and likes to play. If you're looking for a running companion, I think this would be a good dog for you. He is just so well-behaved and well-mannered and just really, really sweet to be around. So please visit Spot on the web at Montgomery County Animal Services and Adoption Center gov or give us a call about him at 240-773-5900.
And with that, we close this edition of County Report this week. Remember to like us on Facebook and to join us again at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. I'm Lorna Virgili, and thank you for watching.